vision speaker, J.J. Madaw, president of the AT Guys, discusses trends in assistive technology. Uh, nothing's happened in the past two years. Thanks for everyone. Have, have a great day. <laughs> Uh, thanks everyone for coming and staying around. Um, hopefully this isn't well, this is a loud microphone. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for coming and stay around. I, I don't know where the back by popular demand thing came from, so thanks to the one person that called in <laughs> and, and requested that. Uh, yes, yeah, so a lot has changed over the past couple years. So yes, I'm JJ Meadow. I do a lot of things among them. I am a co-host of a weekly access technology and more podcast called the Blind Bargains Cast. So if you want to stay up on this more than once every two years, uh, go get the Blind Bargains app on iPhone or Android or just search for Blind Bargains on your podcast player of choice or say, hey, Alexa, listen to Blind Bargains podcast or hey Google, you do the same thing, or hey Siri, and you can uh, keep up to that. We do a new one every week. I just recorded the one from this week last, uh, on Monday, uh, where we talked about uh, my recent trip to California, attending a Google conference, among other things. So go to blindbargains.com so you can keep up on the latest AT news, like I said, more than once every other year. But uh, I'll try to summarize some of the things and we'll leave plenty of time for questions. Of course, remember I'm blind myself, so if you're raising your hands, you're stretching. Great, you can do that all you want. Um, I will open it up for questions a little bit later on after I uh, talk about some intro things that, that have happened in the past couple years. So some things have not changed a lot. Smartphones are still huge. The iPhone is still a game changer for so many people. Androids are getting better. Um, as far as accessibility, while well, the iPhone is still probably the de facto choice, although I think that's changing a little bit and we can talk about that. Um, one of the big things that has come to us on smartphones is the use of all different types of what we're calling assistance apps, whether uh, remote assistance apps, and whether these are automated tools or actually talking to people. And so there's a lot of different flavors of this, and some of this was around a couple of years ago. Um, but there's a lot more of it now. One app that some of you may have heard of on the iPhone is called Seeing AI. Yeah. It's an app from Microsoft, and I purposely, they offer me the, uh, the, the video feed to the projector, but I prefer to bring you into the voiceover world and have you do it all by audio. So I said, no, don't hook it up to the video. So we're giving you just the audio um, of this. So I have the Seeing AI app, and we'll do a live demo, which these never go wrong, right? Live demos? Channel. Pause Let me turn it up a little bit here. Button. Uh, let's see here. Channel, pause announcements, button. So this is voiceover on the iPhone and it's uh, running the Seeing AI app, which is free. So there's a lot of different ch uh, quote unquote channels that you can use. Channel, short text, um, adjustable. Short text. Swipe upward, short text. Probably isn't a lot of short text around here. Short text, uh, document, product, person. These are all things that you can do. Currency person, preview, currency. scene preview. Color preview, scene preview. Um, so if you could do one of these things. Channel, take picture, button, take pic, processing. A group of people in a room. Ah. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's what you are. <laughs> save photo, a group and of people And I could save that picture if I wanted to. Um, take pic, let's channel, see what else we have scene pre here. Currency preview, first two faces. One face near top right, one face near right edge, 10 oh, feet away. Oh, I have away. no idea who we got. Switch to front cam, pause announcement. Channel, person, one face near center, 10 feet away. Two faces. One face near center, 10 feet away. Chat, two you faces. Actually, currency pre, per, product, document. You could actually identify someone. Product, and tell you, person. You know, try to guess how old they are. Currency, scene preview, color preview, handwriting preview, light. Light. Light detector. Very musical. Handwriting preview. Handwriting preview. I don't have any handwriting near me, but that. Where did it come from? Make sure you update to the latest version. <laughs> it came out a couple months ago. It's one of the newer uh, features that's in here. Yep. Yep. And handwriting is new too, so I don't have any handwriting. If somebody wants to quickly write something <laughs> handwriting, bring it up here. <laughs> we can talk about it after. Um, but it, yeah. It, Handwriting is a cool thing because pretty much anything that recognizes text in the past has never been able to do handwriting. It's always been the holy grail. So obviously this isn't perfect, but it's better than nothing. And it actually does, uh-oh, 
Uh oh. Okay. Take channel. Handwriting preview. Uh, let's see. Adjustable. Right about there. Thanks. Swipe up. Take picture. Button. Processing. Visions. What's that what you wrote? <laughs> is, it, was it, is that what you wrote on here? Or did yes. it, look at that. Now, I don't know how good or bad his handwriting was, but. <laughs> not bad. Save for vision. I mean, Save it could have been this visions. perfect print, but. <laughs> Uh, short channel, text. Channel. Color preview. Products. Scene preview. Currency preview. Person. Product. We'll do barcodes. Document. Document. We'll do full page. Channel. Document. But I guess that's the Adjustable. point is, it's a really, as far as apps, color, yeah, money. As far as apps that can do things, it is really, really, really powerful. One of the most powerful things that we've seen in a long time, and it's free. So it's really cool to see again. That's called Seeing AI. It's from Microsoft. It's on the App Store. Yes, that one is just on the iPhone at the moment. Um, Another one that Microsoft came out with more recently, I don't have it on, well, I do have it on my phone, but I just don't have it set up for a demo because we're indoors anyway. It's called Soundscapes. And what it is, is it's kind of a 3D GPS or app. So it'll tell you what's nearby, but if something's to your left, it'll come out your left ear. If it's to your right, it'll come out your right ear. So obviously you'll do it with headphones. So, but it's called Soundscapes. Soundscapes, yep. It's also another Microsoft app, and it's free. So they kind of do a lot of these projects for accessibility um, to you know, just make these things a little bit, you know, they're, they're bringing new technologies, and they're kind of testing them out, and we're the guinea pigs. But hey, it's some pretty cool stuff. So definitely uh, go check those out as far as free um, apps. Now, along the same vein, is that another thing that's really expanded over the past couple years. Um, Be My Eyes was here before, but it's gotten a lot better as far as what we call remote assistance apps. So there are still some things that computers can't do too well. You know, yeah, that CEI told me there was a bunch of people in the room, but if I wanted someone to give me a nice detailed description of the room and what's on the walls and, you know, who's sitting where, you know, a computer can't do that yet. So what you could do is you could use a free service such as Be My Eyes. And that is a free app on iOS and Android where you're essentially calling up some random person who has agreed to take a phone call once in a while. And so, but you're not bothering them, by the way. There's almost a million people that have signed up for this. So you're not bothering them. And you know, they're actually saying, please call, we don't get enough phone calls. Um, so the, the app is free and what you do is you just call and it's kind of like FaceTime with a random person. So the good news is, yeah, you can, have, you can have them describe things to you or have them read things. Now, I wouldn't want them to say, read my bank statement or credit card number or you know, things like that. So you, obviously, you've got to be careful. And, you know, use it for situations where you don't care if your, your grandma saw it or recipes. recipes or, yeah, recipes are a great example. Um, you know, just, just basic things, maybe a business card or something. You know, obviously, you use your own personal discretion of where it makes sense uh, to use something. That's called Be My Eyes. And that's on iPhone and Android, and that's another free app. And they have, they have volunteers all over the place. So if you call at 3 in the morning, which I've done at least once, you'll get someone in Australia or England or whatever. Yep. Yep. So you, you'll get people from all over the world. And if you happen to speak a different language, they will pair you with people in the language that you speak as well. So that's really cool. Um, th another option that is paid, and I'll kind of give you the differences. Um, there's a paid service called Ira. And Ira is spelled A-I-R-A. -A. And what it does, it's kind of the same thing, except you have what they call agents that are trained. So, you know, you ever, uh, you know, you ever go somewhere and you have someone who is very well-meaning and tries to give directions, but they really are not very good at giving directions, you know, or if you're trying to, uh, you're trying to line up text and then they uh, move the camera up. Oh, wait, no, I mean down. Oh, no, I mean left, you know. So, IRA agents are trained at how to describe things in ways that we're used to. Like, okay, you have this coming up at 11 o'clock. And you can use it one of two ways. One is you can use it with the camera on your phone, or you can use it with glasses that they provide. So if you're in travel situations, especially if you're carrying things, if you're walking around an airport, you can call a remote agent and they will guide you if you want. They can read things. I'm a little more okay with them. They have policies in place as far as confidential information and things like that. So I'm, I'm a little more okay with that. It is not cheap. 
Um, the base plan starts at 89 a month for 100 minutes. There are cheaper plans if you get more minutes, or you can do share plans with other people, um, all the way up to an unlimited plan for 329. But a month. But so, the, but see, but see, where, where I think Ira comes in, and obviously it's not going to be for everyone. This is why I mentioned be my eyes. I think if you are a business person like myself, or someone who already perhaps would be paying a, a reader a few hours a month or a, a, having a side assistant to come in to do various things, try to fill out forms, fill out PDFs, you know, go through applications. If you're already going to be hiring someone to do that anyway or trying to struggle to do it yourself, then I think that's where this makes sense. So, you know, again, it's not for everyone, but I think it's a really interesting option that is out there now and kind of gives us another possibility, and that is iOS and Android. What they do have um, is a thing called uh, free site access locations. So some airports, uh, sometimes uh, cities. I don't. There really hasn't been much in Michigan yet. They actually were doing some. Uh, they were doing free uh, IRA at Walmart last week. If you're into that. Um, so you know they're adding more places. So there may be places that pop up that can you can use the service for free without paying. So that's another way that they're trying to expand their service and also a way that places could make their building accessible, right? You know, they could, they could pay for IRA minutes and then kind of like pretty much they're prepaying for the minutes for the people that are going to use them. So they're exploring a lot of different models. They do have free service for anyone who wants to use them for job seeking activities, such as uh, working on resumes, um, working on, you know, doing job interviews, things like that. Obviously, I wouldn't want them during the interview. That'd be kind of weird. Um, but, you know, doing resumes or getting a ride to a job interview, those they are offering for free right now. So you can do free minutes for things like that. So, uh, again, that's ira.io. Uh, and if, if, you do, uh, if you do want to try that, talk to me because, you know, every, it's like everything else. They have referral programs. And I can get you a free month. <laughs> I get one, too. It's okay. A I R A dot I O. It's one of those newer domain extensions. Yeah, there's so many different. We have blind dot bargains as a domain now. So there's so many different. Um, so yeah, that's just some of the uh, the assistance apps that are out there. And of course, I'm not even listing all of them. There's so many different ones. But that's a, kind of a, a new paradigm for the way that we get information. Yeah, we've always had the traditional things like scanning print documents, but newer things like identifying objects or identifying people or you know figuring out how old someone is and if they're smiling <laughs> you know these are all new, newer things with the done by the past couple of years that have kind of changed access for people another one that's kind of in a similar vein is uh, is gps and of course we've had gps in various forms for 10 15 20 years you know blind people were some of the first to have gps just like a lot of other things we were the first to have optical character recognition for text we were the first to have speech synthesis all this stuff that our sighted friends have now, they all got that because of us. So <laughs> GPS is one of those things. It's been around for 15, 20 years. And of course, now it's on our phones if you want it to be there. Um, one that you may or may not have tried out that is free in a free version now is called Nearby Explorer Online. It's available for iOS and Android. And it is a full-fledged GPS dashboard. So if you load up the main screen, it will tell you what's nearby, what street you're on, um, in a lot of cities, and including, I believe, Ann Arbor, um, it has transit information. It'll tell you what, what, what uh, the nearest bus stop is to you when the buses are coming. Um, you can search for locations, and it tends to be, since it's using Google, among others, it's very up to date. So if some new uh, hipster bar opens up across the street, they'll have it on there in, in a week or two, you know, as soon as it gets added to Google Places. So that's nearby Explore Online. So you'll know, if you search for that, you'll notice there's two. There's an online, and then there's another one called Nearby Explorer at 79 bucks. The difference, um, the $79 one has offline maps, so you do not need an internet connection for that one. Um, and it also has more, t so that because of the offline maps, you have turn by turn uh, with the, the $79 version. But you can use the free version if you want, and then do turn by turn from Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever, and you, know, you can do it all for free. So, that's, again, Nearby Explore Online, that's, that's my GPS program of choice. They're also now experimenting with indoor navigation. I don't know of any locations in Michigan yet, 
uh, that have it, but uh, hey, maybe somebody at uh, maybe AADL can be one of the first. That'd be awesome, uh, you know, because it's great for buildings or bigger buildings uh, like this to kind of be able to walk around inside of a building. So, indoor navigation is a new frontier. It's whether you're blind or sighted, right? It's still people are figuring it out. You know, getting around a shopping mall or an airport, and Kind of like a lot of other newer technologies, there's about 15 different standards. Well, they're not standards. There's like 15 different ways that you can do it right now. So hopefully over the next year or two or three, people will start coming behind one or two services. In the blindness space, I think APH is probably the closest to having something. They have things that you can set up now, and it's the, probably the cheapest to implement. Um, a lot of this is done through what's called beacons. Um, and they, they will pretty much, you gotta do two things. One, you have to tell someone where they are indoors. And two, you have to tell them how to get from place to place. So it, it doesn't do enough to say, okay, there's a beacon at this podium and there's another beacon down the stairs at the exhibit room. Well, you also need to know, okay, what are the hallways and paths that you can get from here to there, right? You can't just say, walk 100 feet that way and hope there's no walls, you know, <laughs> you have to. So th th that's the, the two pieces of information that indoor generally needs. So it's still early and there isn't a lot that's, you know, there yet, but it's starting to catch on in the next couple of years and there are systems now that can be implemented. And I like, again, I like nearby because it's free. So if someone were to add indoor GPS to their location, you could get that app for free on iOS and Android. That's really cool. So. Um, as far as GPS, that's that's pretty much about you know, but, you know, lots of stuff for travel, which is really cool because travel leads to independence. I'm a huge uh, Uber and Lyft fan. For ride share, I use it way too often. Probably, I might come up to eight or nine hundred rides now total. But you know, it just really has increased mobility. Using that in combination with airlines and public transit and everything else, and walking, walking is good. Um, you know, using all those together really increases my mobility and, and, and you know lets me uh, get around all over the place and you know people can complain about the cost of ride share or whatever but if you <laughs> ask anyone who owns a car what that costs hey cheap <laughs> it's it's quite a bit so you know I, obviously ride share stuff is, is really cool as well so any questions so far Gigi. yep what's your um, name Ron, oh, Ron. Oh, hey what's up Not cat, no. You, you, well, you, you, but you can also, if you don't want to use a credit card, you could also get a gift card, a prepaid card, uh, and load that onto your account or PayPal. So there are other ways if you didn't want to use a, a credit card. But no. You just, you just give the Uber. You just give the uh, card to the Uber. Driver. No, no. It's all through the app. So everything that you do in Uber, and part of the appeal is that you don't have to deal with. The driver doesn't deal with cash. Oh, okay. So you you could get a gift card or whatever and you could put it in through the app or you could set up PayPal and you could put it in through the app. So there, um, there's also, um, you might mention this because if you are uh, unfortunately a person who doesn't use technology very well, there's something called Go Go Grandparent. Yes, I just heard about this. Go Go Grandparent. Go Go Grandparent. It's a you call a number and you say you want to ride somewhere and they, uh, they will they uh, know where your location is and they'll set up the ride. Set up the ride for you. They they have a concierge fee, which is a, a very small percentage of a, of the amount of miles that you ride and, and possibly the time that you ride. Yep. But if you don't have access to um, to a, a, a you know an application on your computer dot 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 then that's a way to use that. It's, yeah, it's they use Uber and Lyft. They mostly use Lyft, but they do use both. It's certainly better than nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You do take away some of the convenience, but obviously not for someone who doesn't have a smartphone. Um, it's, it's another way to do it. So yeah, that's a, and there's a couple actually, there's a couple of different services like that that do very similar things, but you're gonna, you're gonna pay a little more for that. Yes. Hey, Rosemary. Hey there. And um, the It works. I'm, I'm, so you can get it on your iPad now. Maybe you don't have a flash in your camera. You can't download the, you can't download the app. Your iPad. Yeah. Yes. So you, what you do? What you do? I have this is an iPad right here. Uh, so what you do is when you search on the App Store, or the box that says right now, generally it's by default searches for iP 
iPad apps, but you can tell it to search for iPhone apps from the iPad. And that's how you get it on the iPad. That's how I have it on mine. So you. Mm -hmm. Yep, you just got to make sure make sure you change that little box where it's under the search filters, and make sure you say search for iPhone and iPad, and then you and then you will get the iPhone. It's not it's not optimized for iPad, but you can still use it. So. Yep. Hey Jen. If they tell you I'll be in a blue sedan, that's not really um, going to help, right? So, so it, it, you know, part of it is personal. So part of it is personal preference, right? You know, in Penny also depending on where your location. If I'm at my house, there aren't a lot of cars that come down my road, and usually I can be relatively sure that the next car pulling up, because they'll tell you when they're arriving, is my car. If I'm in a busier place, say I'm out here and I want to get a ride, um, I will often call them up as they're pulling up. If I don't. Like if, if it's not immediately obvious that they're pulling up in front of me, then I will can give them a call like, hey, you know, I, I'm I'm blind. Can you honk your horn or whatever? Or like, where are you at? And it just, usually it goes like this. Hey, uh, just let you know I'm blind. I have a cane. Can you let me know where I'm at? Yeah, I have my blinkers on. Great. <laughs> okay. You didn't listen to what I just said, but <laughs> you know. And then eventually, but eventually after a little Marco Polo, it it, it works out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have another question in the back, I think. I have a question. Yes. I talked to you earlier about foam, and I had the IRA initially when it was like a Kickstarter campaign, and I kind of didn't see paying for it because of the my eyes yet, but do you know if there's any such thing, because I love the idea of the glasses where you're hands-free as opposed to trying to get your phone out pointed at something, and so that's worth a lot to me, but I've looked forever and can't find any reference to any set of video glasses that would just send the camera and make the camera think that that's where it came from. Uh, um, because then if you had that, you could be Yeah, so I don't know. You would need two things. You would need a video camera that would support that, and you would also need an app that would support that setup. I know Be My Eyes specifically is looking into things like that, and you right. might contact them and see if they've okay. made any progress. The, um, the low tech solution, there are some people that I've seen that have worn lanyards. That'll kind of hold your phone and put it out in front of you. Yeah, I even thought about the cat trick. Like, how you can do like if you're they do it for GoPro. Yeah, right. Exactly. It, 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 you know, there's different ways like that. Um, yeah, I've got, obviously, if you're holding the phone, that's one hand right there. And if you're trying to carry a suitcase or something, then you, yeah. that's a much bigger problem. Now, another air, another possibility, although a really really expensive one, but I just mention it to tell you that it's out there, is there's definitely now a proliferation of smart glasses. This started with OrCam which is really expensive, really expensive, 3,500 on up. Um, but, but now there's others as well. CyberEyes is one that seems to be ahead of the curve as far as technology, because they actually have seeing AI built into the glass, or they have, you can use seeing AI, you can do Skype, you can do video calls, you can do a bunch of other stuff. You're looking at 2,500 bucks. So do you so. think maybe they might integrate the Yes, I think they're certainly considering it. Yes, I think they're certainly considering it. Cyber Eyes, so C Y B E R E Y E Z, I believe. I believe it's Cyber Eyes with a Z at the end. I'm actually um, I'm going to write them and see if we can get them on an upcoming podcast because it, they they seem to be one of the more there's at least five or six different glasses yeah. things. I will say, as a totally blind person, I think most of these at the moment are better for low vision people because when I try to say get a barcode and have it read me the product i was having and maybe it's just me i was having much less luck with that than i was with seeing ai or with other things that i've used in the past so maybe i'm just not looking correctly i don't know but i do think they need some of the tools okay you know how knfb reader has the tools to kind of guide you towards the text and it, the tilt guides those type of things a lot of the glasses don't have this stuff yet not that they couldn't and they certainly could upgrade it and, and add it so I think some companies might tell you that they work really well for blind people, but I really would want to try that out first. The latest era also does supposedly have the new glasses, a reader function where you push a button or read Yes, yeah, it has a, so the latest Ira glasses, which are just coming out, uh, have an assistant called Chloe. Everything has to have a name now. Um, the glasses are actually wired to a box. That's a little. I, I wish it wasn't wired, but they're doing that because you get much more battery life now um, than you did in the past. So, 
So uh, we'll take some more questions in a bit, but let me get through a few other things. Uh, this makes sure we can get through them. Um, this is like some of the other things that have happened over the past uh, couple of years. Of course, the assistants are big, right? Last time I was here, the Echo was already out there. Uh, and now we have the Google Home as well. I have both because I'm a pack rat. And actually, I have multiple, I have Sono speakers. I mean, I have lots of things that can interface with both. The thing that has changed over the past two years is now they're a lot more versatile. They have a lot more what Amazon calls skills, what Google calls actions, um, ways that you can interact with them. So if you want to order Domino's pizza, you can, I don't know why you would. Oh, wait, they're, they're from here. I guess it'll be nice to Domino's, right? <laughs> they're based in Ann Harbor. Okay. If you want to order delicious, <laughs> they, don't have, they don't have a cottage in skill yet. But good. Um, Oh, you're getting a buddies too. Not uh, sorry, now I'm making me hungry. If you want to order pizza using your smart assistant, you can do that. If you want to listen to the Detroit Tigers are losing six to nothing today. Sorry, uh, you can. You can. Um, but yesterday was awesome. You can listen to them, but you can do that. Through, I was listening to that through my my Amazon Echo, and you, you talk to it, and it can it can do that with the subscription. What, what, um, what station? Because I was trying to pull that. You have to. Be, you have to do it through the, you have to pay for the, the app at the $20 a year. So, but, but 20 bucks a year is actually, yeah, for 162. The app at, it's the service that you can get MLB games. And it, you, can, you can listen on your phone or your Echo or your computer or whatever. Yep, at bat. Yeah, other sports have their own services that you can pay for. Um, so, that's on the assistance, and there's you know, lots of different things. So you can you can um, send text messages with these things now, and you can play Jeopardy if you want to play Jeopardy, which is which is fun, and, and match game, and all these type of things. So, yeah, but they really have also, you know, they for lots of people who maybe aren't as comfortable with smartphones, they really kind of offer another avenue for independence, right? Because you can read books with Audible on Amazon. Um, or you can order products. They will happily send you things if you link a credit card um, on Amazon or Google. I would set a voice pin, otherwise someone's gonna walk into your house and order things. Not that I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> but definitely you know, set a password there. But you, know, but you can do a lot more with these things than you could a couple years ago. And now they're a lot cheaper. So you don't have to get the full size one. You can get the Echo Dot or the Google Home Mini for 40 or 50 bucks, depending on the day and the sale. And you can try one of these things out for pretty cheap. You know, um, They've come a long way, like I said. The, I personally like the Google one a little more only because I think Google is better at answering questions, you know, like history questions and just like general facts and things like that. Um, Amazon has more skills than Google does, but they're, you know, they're both catching up. The other thing that you can do is smart home control. So you can provide access to a thermostat by getting and access, uh, any of the modern Wi-Fi thermostats, and then you can control it with Alexa or Google. Um, and you can say, hey, t turn the temperature to 72 or whatever. So that opens up a lot of opportunities as well. And you can do some of that with Siri, although Siri is kind of falling a little bit behind on the understanding of smart commands and things like that. So the assistants have uh, changed a lot. Um, even on computers, we've had a lot of changes in screen readers. VFO has bought everybody. Yeah. Um, okay, not everybody. VFO is a joke. They're the company that what they uh, have Freedom Scientific, and they have now bought Optelec, the magnifier company, AI Squared, who makes Zoom Text, Enhanced Vision, who also makes magnifiers. They now are all under the VFO banner. So, as far as video magnifiers and things like that, there's probably going to be some consolidation over time. Um, this did mean that Window Eyes went away as a screen reader, um, which was a great screen reader for its time, but you know, it, it, they, just, they weren't going to run two of them. And probably Magic's on its way out next because they're not going to own two magnification products either. Luckily, in the meantime, NVDA, the free screen reader, has gotten a lot better. And Narrator even has gotten a lot better, the, the one that's built into Windows. So it's really cool that we can say now in 2018 that every major computing and phone platform has a built-in screen reader that you can independently turn on. That's really cool. We, we haven't been able to say that. So Windows, Mac, uh, Chromebook, iPhone, Android. You know, they all have them. Now, obviously, Windows, you're better off. You know, NVDA and JAWS are still better than Narrator, but Narrator's come a long way now. And you can use it to set up your computer. You can take your computer out of the box and set it up by yourself now. And that's really cool. 
that you could do all that stuff that you wouldn't weren't able to do in the past. Um, I'm an NVDA user myself because it's free, and I do think it gets a lot of updates. Um, JAWS still has its purpose, I think, especially for some uh, professionals and for some uh, some of the scripts and things that they have. If you have certain business applications and things like that, but you know. Free is good. If you don't like the voice that it comes with NVDA, you can get other ones. Um, either use the Windows voices or you can purchase other ones. We have some and other people have some as well. So that's new. Um, I mentioned GPS. There's a, a couple new products there. Actually, one especially uh, from Humanware. They took the Victor Stream and the Trekker and mashed them together. Now we have the Victor Reader Trek. Um, it's a Humanware product, although we sell it as well. And so it's an all in one. Uh, book player and GPS, so it can do everything from reading your NLS books and Bookshare, reading Audible, you can do internet radio, you can do podcasts, and you can do GPS all in one little device. So, you know, obviously you can do a lot of these things or most of these things with an iPhone, but some people like the buttons or some people want the battery life that one of these players gives you. So, you know, it kind of creates a lot of uh, different opportunities there. Uh, any other any questions at this point? I have one. Yeah. Um, my name is Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Um, is there a device that would let me opt out of the Microsoft Satellite? Like to know what channel I'm changing, my what, what I'm doing? That's a good segue. You know what? Um, we'll so this has actually come quite a bit in the past couple of years. Mo which which sort of company do you have? And I believe they have, I, I know Dish Network does, and I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think DirecTV also has a talking box. TiVo does. TiVo does. Most of them, so most of the major cable companies now have some sort of talking box option. So Comcast definitely does, Spectrum slash Charter does, um, Dish Network does, and, it's, and some others do as well, and more of these are coming online. So if you have a cable subscription, call them up, and I know sometimes you might, the first person you talk to might have no clue what you're talking about, but most of these companies now do have accessible set-top box options, which is really cool, and apps too. You know, like I use the Spectrum app to do on-demand shows, and you know, you can schedule DVR and things like that. This has come a long uh, way. The other option, if you wanted to say dump, you know, quote, unquote, cut the cord entirely, a lot of those apps are accessible. YouTube TV is a service from Google which you can access from an iPhone or Android or from a computer. They don't have as many channels, but they, it's all online and you can um, access that and that's really accessible and you can use it with audio description and things like that. Is that through smart TV or just through your phone? So YouTube TV would be through your phone or you can send it to a TV as well. You could get a Chromecast, which is a little $35 thing that would plug into your TV and then it would send up the video to the TV. So you can do that that way. Um, a lot of TVs themselves also have speech built in. Um, Samsung is probably one of the strongest contenders here for good implementation of accessible TVs. Amazon Fire, e the Amazon Fire is good. Yeah, so the Amazon has a couple TVs. The Element TVs are pretty good. TCL runs Roku. Roku has accessibility now that, that didn't exist a couple years ago. Um, there's a couple that aren't that are <laughs> there but not as good. You know, for instance, the LG TVs. Um, you can't independently. One of the big things I would want is be able to independently turn on and off the speech, because I might want the speech and someone else in my family might not want it at all, right. or maybe I don't want it someday. <laughs> so, I would definitely look for one where Samsung, Amazon, TCL, and some of the others, where there's a button or a menu. You know, a, a quick way for a blind person to turn on and off the speech. That's really important, I feel. So, you know, that would be definitely a feature uh, to look out. And, and like Rob said, so the Fire, many of these sticks, the Roku, the Fire TV, the uh, Apple TV, of course, the NVIDIA Shield, they all have accessibility features that you can t plug that into your TV and they will all uh, talk to you as well. So these things have come quite a way. Actually, I do some freelance writing for AFB's uh, Access World uh, online magazine. And me and Shelly Brisbane are going to start, we're going to do a, a deep dive on a lot of these TV sticks over the next couple, three, few months. So we're going to be doing reviews on them and playing with them and getting paid to watch TV. I love it. Love it. Binge watch and get paid for it. So. 
I wanted to mention yeah. too that a lot of the companies now, like Apple and I think it's Comcast, I think, have an accessibility hotline. Yes. That's a really good point. Yeah, that there's an accessibility hotlines. You can also, or just Google for, uh, you know, Comcast accessibility line. They have one. Spectrum has one. Apple has one. Google has a help desk email. So that's definitely a way, and, and those people are more likely to know. Oh, we have the, they have the Irish Rovers coming in here. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? Yes. I, could you speak a little more about the classes? Uh, the special classes, I think you said cyber something. Cyber eyes, yeah. Uh, oh. Sure, what, what would you like to know about them? Well, since I don't know anything about them. Okay. <laughs> so. And I, and, I will, and I will qualify with this. I've seen them at a show, and I haven't, don't, I don't know a lot about them. Um, but what they did is they took a, an Android smart glass setup called the View 6, and then they added special software to it. So it does everything from Skype video calling to the seeing AI that I demoed earlier, um, object recognition, text recognition. Um, I think it does face detection and, and a bunch of other things as well. Um, and you know, it has wireless built in. Um, none of these have great battery life yet, maybe like two or three hours. So that's a thing to think about. You know, they're, they're new. These are emerging technologies for sure um, and not cheap yet. I was thinking about like when I go to the grocery store and can't yeah. see. You know, you know and, and, and I think it's kind of like so the the, the ID made, which is the standalone barcode reader that's been around for many years and in many now it's up to the galaxy. Um, they used to always say too, well, you could take it to the grocery store and but okay, right, but okay, but if you're in the soup aisle, you're trying to figure out which of the 74 varieties of Campbell's soup that you want. That's gonna take a half hour on one item. And I think you're going to have the same problem with the glasses, you know, and until they get to that point where you, I mean, that is, that is one thing where a human helper, I think, can do that a lot faster than, you know. Now, if you have a really, you know, that's, that's probably why I say maybe better for, for low vision, because you might have a little better idea of being able to zone in. And then if you're just not sure, okay, is this the low sodium or the non or whatever version, then you can figure that out a little easier. So. I honestly want to play with that one a little more and be proven wrong. I, I, to me, a lot of these glasses technologies are a year or two or three off. Now, what for low vision users, what some of them do do is augment your vision. And depending on the, the type and the type of visual impairment you have, they actually provide a lot of possibilities for magnifying things. And so you, you also get a magnifier with that as well. And that's, I think, where their primary focus is at the moment. Does that make sense? Yeah. What internet providers do we have in the area? That's somebody who lives here. Oh, where, where do you live? I'm in Ithaca. I, 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 I don't, I don't, okay. <laughs> on the docket that I know of are AT&T, which I abhor, mm -hmm. and Comcast, which I... <laughs> You're going to need to... <laughs> we have because it's the fastest one in the area. Right. Um, I, I don't live... I live on the west side of the state, so I can't, I, I can't help you. That, that would probably be a better question for someone who lives around here. Um, I will say that some people, depending on how much you are doing online, and if you're not doing a lot, some people are using unlimited cell phone data plans and just do getting their internet through there, and that's saying that's one less bill to get. So obviously, if you're doing a lot of, uh, a lot of Netflix and listening to music or downloading videos, and that might not be the best option because after you, unlimited is not really unlimited. They kind of, after a while, they start to, hey, you're using a whole bunch, then they're gonna, you know, slow you down. I download but, a lot of talking books. Okay, well, you know, you're right, and talking books are somewhere over in the middle as far as, I mean, they're not a video, but they certainly are something. Um, but there are, um, like I said, some unlimited plans might work for you. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I would. I would say other than that. Uh, okay. I'd say other than that, talk to someone local because I don't live. I don't live over here. So. We're, we're relatively new to this. Yeah, sure. My name is Heidi Garrett. Hey, Heidi. Uh, our son is visually impaired. Okay. We're trying to explore what sort of things that would be those baseline things because you're talking about all. Sure. How old is he? 
out there that what would be the things you'd say you you would say these are five things they absolutely cannot live okay. without and this would be great to have and wish that we How old how old is he? He's eleven. Oh okay. Um I mean honestly at eleven, I mean I'm assuming so he's like in fifth or sixth grade right now or sixth grade. Cool. Um by 11, now, okay, there was an iPhone then, but I feel like by 11 now, I would have had an iPhone. Or, or if you don't want to do, give him a phone, an iPod um, at this point. Um, is he a Braille user? No, not, he's, so he's, he's 2100. Okay, so pretty good vision. So, I mean, obviously, a portable magnifier is probably the number one, because that's very handy to have with you, you know, depending on the type of vision loss he has. Um, really, the smart phone or whatever or device is the number one at this point because it it locks everything out now of course or everything else of course there's the typical parental type thing it's like all right what much do you want to give your kid but if you were to give your 11 year old sighted son a, a smartphone then i would do the same thing for your blind kid because i mean that really that connects you to everything else and of course there's the, the there's the parental controls that you can get on a device like that I would say that's the number one at this point. Make sure they're signed up for all of the, the free book services. Of course, the NLS Bard is free from the library. Bookshare is free for kids. You know, make sure they're signed up with all that stuff so they can get all the, the access to that information. Um, and then completely outside of technology, just try to you know, connect them to other people that are visually impaired so they can start to network with people and ask questions and learn how people their age and older are doing things. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, where are we on time? Okay, we can have time for one or two more. Jason, yeah. Jason, um, this is Ron um, I just, uh, another nice little skill on, I don't know about the Hey Google, but on Amazon, there you can say, what, uh, Alexa, what's free to Audible? Now, for the past two or three months until this month, around the night of May, they streamed a book called West Cork uh, from Audible. Yeah. It was free to stream for two or three months. Now, that selection has probably changed. Another thing, I will say another thing about this Amazon Fire, my nephew was able to enable or disable the speech for me. So I could get navigate YouTube, and it would tell me every letter and stuff like that. And if I wanted to watch Star Trek, and just uh, have Alexa search for Star Trek, and you just start binge watching. So you know, and the, and the, right, and the, and the cool thing about a lot of these modern TV things, especially if they're within the last year or two, if you don't have one yet, it's very likely someone else in your family or a friend has one. So next time you're at their house, it's like, hey, we're going to make this thing talk. <laughs> we're going to play with this for a little bit. You know, show, show, show them how you turn it off. The, you know, if you want to be nice, turn off the speech before you leave, or they're going to be like scratching their head and trying to figure out what the, nothing more fun than walking into a Best Buy and starting to make all the computers talk. Yeah. All right, bye. See you later. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> you know? No, my nephew is a tech guru. He pretty much cool. knows how to enable and disable it. Awesome. Awesome. Any more? Uh, one more. Does everybody know about like descriptive video on um, um, YouTube and now? Um, and Netflix. Wait a minute. How do you? Um, I said YouTube, not Netflix. Uh, is there a setting that? Because someone said it is on Netflix, but is yes. there a setting you have to? Yes. Well, okay. Yes, you do have to enable. Um, two things you can do on an iPhone. One, you can go to under settings under I believe it's under accessibility settings you can turn on audio description and that will enable it for whichever apps support that setting and then also if you're in Netflix you what you want to do is choose the language track and then you're going to choose uh, the audio described track and lots and lots and lots of things are on Netflix are described now so yep this is Georgia Kitchen I just want to make a comment about the I don't know how many people have iPhones but my understanding is down in Florida the light does Agency for the Blind in West Palm Beach, they say that people in their 80s and 90s down there, they're going to be down there. So mm -hmm. I encourage people. And then Hadley School for the Blind, Hadley Institute for the Blind has free um, instructional videos. You can download the audio or the video. They're wonderful on how to do certain things on the iPhone. Yes, absolutely. Please don't don't assume if you're if you're a senior or whatever that you can't use a, a smart you know a smartphone. And things like that because there's you know lots of possibilities out there and it be news line is a grid on hadley right georgia hadley h-a-d-l-e-y 
And the other, of course, the other site for the iPhone that many of you may have heard of is AppleViz, A-P-P-L-E-V-I-S.com. And they have all sorts of app reviews, podcasts, and things like that. So, Isn't that um, Hadley-school.edu, Hadley I, I think? They probably own both domains, but I know Hadley.edu works. Hadley works. Oh, okay. they, may, they may have the other. What was the research you just said before you had the earth? AppleVis, A-P-P-L-E-V-I-S dot com. And there's a podcast also called Blind Vet Tech. You don't have to be a veteran to listen to it. You can listen to it on a number of devices. Blind Vet Tech? Cool. Always, -E 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 -E. Always learn new things. .com. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. It does it. It's real clear and they're, they're short. He just covers one, you know, one basic thing at a time, but they're great for seeing. Awesome. Well, cool, folks. If you have a uh, if you have more questions, I'll give out my contact information. Feel free to ping us. Um, the show is pretty much closed, but we, um, you can uh, always email me. I'm at, or you, actually I'll give out our general address, support at atguys.com. So S-U-P-P-O-R-T at A-T-G-U-Y-S dot com. atguys.com, we do sell a lot of assistive technology, gadgets for phones and other affordable tech, uh, voice recorders, braille displays, the Victor truck, et cetera. So that's at atguys.com. And like I said, support at atguys.com if you have questions. It doesn't have to be something we sell. We're always happy to try to point people in the right direction uh, for whatever you need. Um, our phone number, yes, it goes to voicemail a lot because we travel a lot, but we do return them within a day or two. 269-216-4798. Um, 269-216. 4798. We answer email the fastest. I'll definitely tell you that. It's, it's part of the pains of being a small business is we don't have a, someone managing the phones. I, I seriously get calls like at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night. I'm like, why is no one in the office? Like, because it's Sunday <laughs> and it's 11 o'clock. You know, but if you email me at 11 o'clock on a Sunday, then you might actually, we might actually see it right away. So the other thing, of course, like I mentioned at the top, blindbargains.com, our weekly podcast usually comes out around Friday or Saturday every week. And you know, it's a podcast, so the news at the beginning, and then we have interviews, tips, and other stuff. So you can skim it, you can listen to the whole thing, just download the ones you want. Um, we were at the big uh, CSUN Assist Access Technology Conference in San Diego in March, and did over 30 podcast interviews from there. So a lot of the news things that are out, we've talked to the people who created them, and you can hear demos and a lot more. So that's, again, blindbargains.com, or you can um, just um, search for Blind Bargains on your app of choice but thank you so much thank you, uh, thank really you so that. much JJ. this program was recorded on may 16th 2018 at the ann arbor district library